Hello everyone, this is Kerwin and welcome to another episode of What's Happening in Travel with Kushu and Kerwin. Kushu is not here today. I am actually in a hotel room uh, in Las Vegas when I'm recording this. The hotel room lighting is terrible. So there's all kinds of weird shadows and everything on it if you're if you're watching this. But uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about uh, well, what's happening in travel, right? Uh, my background today is actually a Boeing 737 uh, MAX 9. The reason why the Boeing 737 MAX 9 is my image today is because we've had an incident. Now, the, in aviation, there's incidents and accidents. Incidents is usually when something happens to an airplane and no one dies, then it's an incident. But if somebody dies, then it becomes an accident. Either way, the National Transportation and Safety Board, which is called the NTSB, is responsible for in investigating uh, this type of thing. And actually, um, quick aside, I actually wanted to work for the NTSB at uh, some point in my aviation career, but it just never materialized. Uh, so the some facts. And what I'll do, I'm actually going to go to the Alaska Airlines website because they have the uh, correct information in there. And actually what I what I, I'm gonna do is uh, share my screen because I think that's probably the easiest way um, to get the information to get the information um, out. So I'm just just gonna share my screen. And all this information is actually on the Alaska Airlines website. So if you want to go check it, you can. They have a link at the beginning uh, that links over to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. And Okay. So... You should be seeing my screen now. Yeah, I think you are. Yeah, you are seeing my screen. Okay, perfect. So um, basically at 7.55 Pacific time on January 5th, which is, I'm recording this on the 6th, so this is yesterday, uh, which is actually, say, 15, so it's just a little over um, an hour, 24 hours ago. Alaska Airlines flight 1282 was going from Portland, Oregon, to Ontario, California. It experienced an incident uh, soon after departure. The aircraft landed safely back in Portland with 171 guests and six crew members. They and they just, you know, the safety of our um, customers is their tantamount um, responsibility, et cetera. But typically what happened is uh, just right after takeoff, there is a little on on the on the Max Nine, and also the seven thirty seven nine hundred ER, there is a, a an extra door. Now the reason why there's an extra exit door on the on this aircraft is because um, if you have a certain number of I don't know the exact numbers, but you need to have uh, enough exits everyone can evacuate. If you have a certain number of of um, seats on the airplane. In this particular, this particular uh, Max does not have the required seats, but it's using the same airframe. So if a customer comes to Boeing and say, hey, we're going to put this many people in it, then all they need to do is just you is just make that door an actual exit. When they don't make it an actual exit, what they do, they cover it. And in the industry, it's called plugging. And in essence, they put something over that door and you still have a wind, a little window in it, um, but the, the door doesn't exist and it's covered over. And as a customer, you can't see it. As an aviation geek, you will see it from the outside because it looks like a little, it actually looks like a, an exit door uh, outlined, um, but it, it's it's carefully disguised. So you don't, you know, as a customer, you don't care about it. Well, that little, that plug popped out of the airplane and uh, luckily there was no one sitting at that seat. And when it came out, of course, the aircraft depressurized, the oxygen mask came down, 
crew went into emergency mode. They circled and then they came back and landed and they landed safely. Some people were injured, um, as you can imagine. But I think the, the last thing I read said every, everyone has been cleared. So as a result, uh, Alaska put out you know, some statements uh, about um, the impact of the flight. And as someone who's actually worked in this part of the industry, when I used to work in airlines, um, every airline has a special team that will take care of incidents so or accidents. So whenever something happens, this team gets dispatched or, uh, or is activated. I was on the web team, so I was responsible for communicating all the information that you would see on the website. And so I would get, I would gather all the information. I would give it to the to the team that would actually put it on the website. But it was my job to get everything together in a form that that they need, get all the copy and everything, and send it over. And then they would put everything and all the assets they needed. So if they needed pictures of airplanes, blah 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 blah, whatever they needed, I would make sure they get that. Everyone has a different role in this. Uh, there are some people in the case of an accident. Some people have to actually go to the crash site and meet the families. And then um, they end up assigning a person or persons to particular family members to make sure that everything for that family member is, take, is taken care of. So everyone has a different role. What you normally see is the role of the crew because they're the ones that are there at that time. But there's a whole bunch of people behind the scenes that's making sure that everything goes. This crew did an amazing job. Um, you know, by making sure everybody was okay, landing the plane safely. And uh, I, I can't tell if they did an evacuation or not. Um, but, you know, they took care of the passengers as they, as they should. And then, like I said, there's other people behind the scene who are doing something very similar that you don't see or hear about unless you're actually involved in the accident or incident. Um, so... The of course, whenever these kind of things happen, the first thing is safety, right? So what Alaska did, they have sixty five Boeing seven thirty seven dash nines or Max nines, and um, they took them out of service, and they started to do the inspection. At this moment, they're still inspecting them, and as they inspect them and see that there is nothing, um, integ in integrity wise wrong with the airplanes. They put them back in service. But what that means though is because they took them out of service, if you were on, if you were booked on one of those flights, the flight would be canceled. And what they would end up doing is rebooking you. So that would affect you. Now the um the FAA later came out and said um all the airplanes, all the Max 9s in the US are grounded or passing through the US um or are grounded. And this happened at um uh let's see uh ba -da -ba -da. trying to see what time this happened but this happened earlier earlier today i can't find the timeline here but uh this ended up happening earlier today where the faa um i'd, I'd grounded it but alaska had already grounded them um as soon as as soon as this happened which is typical for airlines because if something happens to an aircraft especially at the max which had issues before then you want to make sure that everything is good. So they initially grounded them, checked them, they were okay, and they're putting them back in service as they check them. As you can imagine, the six to five airplanes is going to take a little time. Well, the FAA grounded, because this morning I was leaving Houston and I, there was a, a United 737-9 uh, coming in and uh, it was very foggy. I took some photos, you can see some photos uh, um, in the in the, in the the show notes for here. Uh, and they weren't grounded at the time. This one was coming in from Baltimore to Houston. It's like a 6 a.m. flight or something like that out of Baltimore, a very early flight, because it was about 8.30 or so when it landed, just before 8.30. Um, and so uh, the, the the issue, oh, so the FAA decided we're going to ground all the, all the MAX 9s in the U.S. and we'll figure out what's going on with them. Now, no one knows yet the cause of the accident or the incident. All we know is that the the plug uh, popped out and uh, the aircraft depressurized naturally and um, the oxygen mask came down and the crew did what they're trained to do. 
So this air, so the airplane is now sitting in a hangar somewhere and they're looking at it and the NTSB, the National Transport Safety Board, have come in and taken over the investigation. And so they're going to figure out what is wrong. Problem with everything is that um, we're in the age where everybody wants to know everything immediately. Um, with every with aircraft incidents or accidents, you don't know anything immediately because it takes time. So they're going through to figure out well what really happened, uh, which is why they Alaska did the inspection because because if something was going wrong with these planes, they want to make sure. That, and because this is new, this this one came, I think, October, the end of October, October 31st, was when they actually got this particular uh, aircraft. Um, so just be patient. Um, United is also in inspecting theirs. And as soon as they inspect them and find there's nothing wrong with them, they're putting them back in back into service. Um, so people can get where they where they need to go. The there is talk of um the Boeing 737-900 extended range, which is 900 ER, also has the same technology where it has a plug. These airplanes have been operating for a long time. I've flown on them myself many times. I've flown the Max 8, the Max 9, the 7 anyway. Um, and they've been, you know, this the, the technology that they're using is, is either the same or very similar. Uh, so if it was just something wrong with this, production line that came out on the, the 31st, then they'll go, you know, look at all the airplanes that were made during that time. Um, I, I have not heard of any grounding of any other MAX 9s around the world just yet, because there are other operators that operate them. In the U.S., it's only um, it's only United that operates the, the MAX 9s and um, Alaska. So it only affects those two airlines. So, um, I don't think I have any, I think that's about all the, I was just going to stop sharing my screen. Um, but if you are on, if you are on, um, uh, they, they, this is what uh, I'll ask up the early stage, here are the details we can share and they shared everything that they can share. Um, again, there's always speculation. There's always people making up stuff. There's all these experts that come out of the woodwork, um, you know, but just know that the NTSB is on the case. The FAA has grounded the airplanes. The airlines are testing them and checking to make sure everything is good. And once they find that everything is fine, they put them back into service. But in the meantime, you will have cancellations and you may have, of course, um, some delays. If you have a cancellation, the airlines are going to rebook you anyway. Um, but so just contact them. Um, you know, th that that's all the information that, that I have. They don't know why it happened. Uh, all they know is that it happened. And now we get to the point of uh, investigating it because, um, since it fell off, what they're probably going to do is try to find it. That's typically what will happen. And they, they don't know where it is. Um, oftentimes like, uh, when one of the, I think a carving had fallen off a plane in Denver and it would it fell in somebody's front yard. Um, but they know the flight path of the airplane. They you know they they know exactly when it when it when it happened. Um because you know the, everything is all timed. And so um that's what's happening with that. Uh there is another uh incident, but um what I will do is I will make another uh another post about that particular one. This one is Japan Airlines uh, A350-900 um, that had an accident in um, Tokyo. Uh, I need it, but uh, I'll do another post uh, and, and talk about that one. Uh, that would be much easier. So that's all I have for this episode. I just wanted to, to at least you know let you all know what happened with this. And if you have any issues, contact um, Call United. Um, I think one of one eight hundred five two three fair, and um, I think Alaska is actually one eight hundred Alaska Air. I think, um, but just go to their website, and uh, you know, if you're booked on a on a Max Nine, how do you know? People are asking, how do you know that you're booked on a Max Nine? If you go and pull up your reservation, it normally tells you the aircraft type on your in the, in your in the details of your reservation. So just pull that up and you can take a look and you can figure out what your what the aircraft type is. 
Um, and that's really all I have. Uh, I don't have any questions or anything that came in um, uh, the last week or so, but uh, I'll make sure that this gets put up as soon as possible. Um, but if you guys have any questions or anything at all about this, leave a note below or send me an email, feedback at passrider.com. And uh, this is Kerwin with What's Happening in Childhood Crucial with Kerwin. Have a great flight and talk to you soon.